Hello, my name is Mike Driscoll, and today we're going to talk about using CSS to live style your textual application. So textual is a Python package that you can use to create beautiful TUIs or text-based user interfaces in your terminal. Now recently I had a problem. I was running my code and I really wanted to have a data table which would show rows of data and then have some buttons on the bottom. The problem is that the buttons don't show up quite right. They're way down here, which is kind of where I wanted them, but I, I wanted the buttons to be completely shown. Right now they're pushed off just a little bit off of the bottom. And I also wanted them to just like stay put while I resized it. And you can kind of see what I'm talking about if I resize this just a little bit. Um, you can see it still looks, it just looks weird. And so I'm going to show you how to fix stuff like that. So when you're using Textural, you can use CSS to do all of your styling. This is the styles that I'm using right now. And this is the code over here. Let's just talk about the code first. So first things first, you set the CSS path. This tells Textural to look at a TCSS file that you want to edit. So we're going to edit with, uh, or that you want to apply styles from, and then, but we can live edit this, which we'll get to in a minute. Then we have Compose, which is where you usually put your code for creating the widgets. In this case, I have a data table. I have some containers, center, horizontal, a couple of buttons here at the bottom. And then under Mount, I'm just mounting a couple rows of data. They don't have anything in them right now. So I'm just putting no data found. Press Control L if you like to load a file, which I don't have implemented yet. And then I just add some columns based on the data that's in there. Cool, everything works the way I want, except those buttons just don't work the way I'd like them to. So uh, to figure out what's going on and why those buttons are being pushed all the way to the bottom, we need to run this application in developer mode. So we're going to do textual run, and we're going to run our live example here. And you just do dash dash dev at the end, and that puts it into developer mode. And so now we can go to our CSS and we can start experimenting. So the first thing I want to do is I probably should put some borders on things so I can see what's going on. So let's say we want to do a border. Um, I think it's gold maybe. Let's try that. Okay, so bo 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 the border is set to gold and it surrounds that data table. Great. And now let's um, add it to my button row. So if we go back over here, uh, you can see the ID for the, set, the horizontal um, container which puts the widgets in horizontally from left to right. We have that set to button row as the ID. So to select that, you just do a pound button dash row, uh, align middle, so it's aligned where I'd like it to be. But let's take a look at the border. So let's say we want that one to be blue. Let's hit enter. Okay, so now we can kind of see what's going on. Let's uh, resize this again. Just a smidge. All right. So the, the horizontal container is taking up a lot of room, which isn't exactly what I wanted it to do. So we can experiment. But one of the things that I really like about this is that you can actually add borders to everything. So let's say we want to add a border to this as well. We'll make this one green. Actually, let's not do green. Let's do um, purple. All right, hit enter. You can see that there's some so you can't see it very well, but there is a purple outline on that too. So now we can all see the outlines for all of our widgets on the screen, and they're all different colors to help us differentiate what's going on. So I talked to some people at, at the textual group, and I just was like, you know, I'm, I'm really confused what's going on here. And one of their main things to do is, you know, go ahead and add the borders, and then that'll help you diagnose what the heck is going wrong with your code. So let's try that. So we've got that on there. We can see the problem. Let's try changing the height of the horizontal widget to something else, like auto. So when you set it to auto, what happens is that the widget or the container will resize to fit uh, what, what, it, what it contains. So in this case, the horizontal widget is resized to the right height to contain those widgets. But now, as you can see, uh, they're up at the top, and I kind of wanted them at the bottom in case my data got bigger. So if I had, you know, 100 rows, it would push, the, the data table would be big enough that I could see a lot of data without pushing these widgets ever off the screen. So that's not quite what I wanted yet. 
So let's go over here, go to our data table, um, hashtag data table, and we're going to change its height. So instead of 50%, which wasn't working for me, we could try something like 90%. And that pushes it down most of the way that we'd want it to be. In fact, that, that's probably good enough. Another way you could do it is you could say 1FR, which is a special um, measurement unit in textual. But if you save that, it's very similar to, basically it says that's like 100% um, of all the rest of the room. So that's kind of how, you, how I like to look, think of it anyway. It's trying to use up the rest of the room in the widget or in the space without pushing the other one off of the screen. But, you know, 90% to me is a little bit more explicit. So let's go back to that um, and do that. Now, I will point out if we change this to 100%, it will push those bottom widgets out, which is not what we wanted. So let's not do that. But now we have it exactly where we wanted to, and we just had to change um, the heights. So that, that was a really quick and dirty way to, to fix that problem. However, one thing that was pointed out to me is that you know, I'm kind of making, I'm kind of overdoing things by um, nesting all of these different containers. So right now I have a vertical outside container, a widget, a center container, a horizontal container, some buttons, etc. We can simplify this a little bit. So if you look in here, my middle row is already aligned um, the way I want it to be. It's aligning these widgets into the middle. So what I could do is we can try to get rid of the center one and see if we can make it work without it. So let's just do that. We'll unput that back, change our code and save it, and we'll close this one. Because when you save a Python file, it doesn't auto update. You can only auto, it only auto update with um, the CSS files. So all I did was remove the center one. Now I don't need that anymore. That can actually be removed from the code entirely. And that's all I need to do because, um, like I said, we already have the line part right here, center middle, set. So that center uh, container wasn't actually doing anything at this point. Now, if I, if I got rid of this line in the CSS, I need to put the center container back in. So it kind of gives you a little bit of flexibility in textual. You can decide whether you want to use a container or you want to do all of the styling with CSS. Anyway, that kind of concludes what I wanted to talk about in this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and subscribe if you'd like to learn more about my new videos that are coming out. Thanks so much for watching.